Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're starting back at a listed property over in Kent and we're gonna finish off getting a majority of the radiators first fix upstairs and also continue with the monumental amount of insulation that we've got to do on the plate work. After that, we'll be jumping on to some designer rads down in East Sussex and we'll be second fixing the bathroom back at the Royal Renovation. Okay, so this is the biggest radiator that's actually going in this property. It's two meters by 600 or 600 tall by two meters long. It's double panel and it's going underneath this window. So all the places or positions where we can actually hang these radiators, we're gonna get the copper tails up through the floor, get it piped up. Just makes it a lot easier when we're second fixing. There's no point putting the tails up if you don't have the radiators because sometimes, especially if you don't know the build off, up off the wall you'll just get them in the wrong place so that's one that we're doing today that one's going over there so down here you can see this is where the pipe insulation or we ran out of pipe insulation the other day so we're going to continue with that i've got this small double panel radiator going next to that window so same thing we're going to get it piped up uh, we've left it in the packaging so all the rads will leave protected and we're just cutting out these slots in the back for the brackets and then Bailey is just piping up one here on the landing area. So because this is a plasterboard wall, what he's done is he just put a scrap piece of ply on the wall just to um, basically make up the depth of the plasterboard and he's getting that piped up. So once he's piped up, we can get that rad removed. So Okay, so we continued on with the lagging. So what I'm gonna try and do is just allow an hour a day each time we're on site to get this lagging done because it is so boring <laughs> doing it. Uh, so I think we've done about 150 meters worth of lagging so far. So we're getting there, we're almost halfway through, I would say now up on the first floor, just kind of run out of zip ties as well. So we are up to this point here where we're at the master bath and master shower room. So we've just got that section along there to do um, and all the little bits downstairs. So yeah, nothing really special in the technique. We're just cutting it and zip tying it, um, trying to get as much covered as possible. Felt in between the joists and it does protrude, uh, protrude, sorry, just above the joist level, but when you screw down the chipboard, it'd be totally fine. So yeah, we're going downstairs now to start first fixing the guest on suite. Okay, so we're back down in the guest on suite now and this is that room where I was running those pipes through the joists in a previous video. So, we are waiting for the stud work to go up still on this back wall. So I spoke to the builder this morning um, about how we want it to be done because we're going to have to run some waste pipes uh, low level along here. The shower tray on this one's definitely going to have to be raised because we've got a clay stack there with a clay elbow and we're having to reuse the old inch and a half and inch and a quarter waste pipes there. So. What we're gonna be doing is running the inch and a half underneath uh, to where the shower tray is gonna go, running the 32 mil just above it, but when it gets past the point of the shower tray, we're actually gonna to have to chase it into the wall so we don't have to stud all this off and poke a waste pipe out um, at the location for the basin. So yeah, let's get started with that. Okay, so what we've done is we've gunned out around the area where the existing waste pipes are and just cut them right back and put some new fittings on and just run them flush against this wall. So can't do anything with that stock clock at the moment. It's actually still live, which was surprising. Um, so I opened it up and I'm absolutely soaked. So these are gonna pick up the shower. So we just left a spigot on that. And then this top one is for the basin, which is going over here. So Bailey has chopped in the wall here, secured it with some galvanized band. So you won't see that at all. So that wall won't need to be boxed off. So. Um, yeah, all good, and we can move on to the next job. 
Okay, so these are the designer radiators we're going to be fitting. So any of you that might be consider fitting different style radiators than your standard white steel panel ones, you may have seen this style. You can grab them off eBay and I'll be honest, every time we get them from different manufacturers or eBay, they're actually exactly the same radiator. So I think they are NRG, I believe. Um, is either the company or the brand so we fit these quite a lot you can get them in all different colours um, throughout this property we're going to be putting uh, white ones in so they are a little bit more tricky to fit so I'll just spin this radiator around quickly so on the back here you can see we've got these two runs here obviously where the water passes through and that is where we've got our brackets need to hang. So the brackets are more like hooks and they hook under. So you've got four individual brackets and what you need to do is get this radiator measured out correctly and get them set out apart, equal between these slots here between the panels and to get it hung correctly. So what I've done is we've worked out how high we want the radiator off the floor or Bailey has as he's already installed two and from there, what I'll do is I'll measure the center between this bar here, this bottom bar, and that gives us our distance between um, the two brackets vertically. And then we're actually gonna be putting the brackets on these end slots here. So I'll measure this distance here from the center, and then we can get them all spaced out. So what I've done on this wall here, where this one's going, I've got my center line here. And this is the top of the bracket on the top left, top of the bracket on the top right. And I've almost drawn a square on this wall. So the only issue you can see here, because it's a new build or fairly new build property, it's running 10 mil pipe. So because there's slots in the radiator, you will be able to see the pipe work very slightly. So what I'll do is I will get the brackets on and then show you what it looks like. Okay, so I'm beginning to get these brackets on now and because it's a timber framed house, this is just a plasterboard wall, so I'm having to use some plasterboard fixings. So I'm using these um, grip it fixings. Um, they're really, really good actually. Um, just using a 20 mil spade bit to get them in. And you then need to open up the butterfly section on the back and then just tighten up the um, quite thick bolt or screw that goes through here so that's the plasterboard one and I'm just keeping the bracket straight with a plug and screw on the top as I can't get too close together enough so here's one here so we're using the brown ones not sure if you can see that but yeah we're using the brown ones um, they are rated up to 93 kilograms each so this rad's only about 15 kilograms I hope it should be fine if it was any bigger I would probably cut this out and add some battens but I think we'll be okay Okay, so this radiator is all hung on the wall now and it's looking nice and neat. So we don't actually have the radiator valves on site. So at the moment, we're just getting them all hung, uh, ready to go. And they can be lifted off at this stage just to be decorated behind. So I'm just looking at the way some of these 10 mil pipes are terminated through the wall. But as you can see, this one's a right old mess. So I'm a big fan of 10 mil pipe. We're going up to Raz. I think it's a really good idea. It works really well. Obviously, it makes the job a lot easier. But... You've got to terminate it properly, it just looks like a right mess. So we've just got wood screws going through a standard um, face plate with no um, exit port at the bottom or the side. So they're having to just chop out bits of the plasterboard. So it's gonna make it a bit difficult for us to re-plumb these ones in. But anyway, let's get this one up on the wall, another small one. So plasterboard fiction should be fine. Okay, so we've moved back down to the rural renovation now and we are doing the master on suite. So previously we've already put the shower components on the wall and today we've got to fit the double vanity unit, the towel rail and also the toilet and then tomorrow's job is going to be to fit the bath and the freestanding taps. So let me just show you what we've got to do. So the freestanding bath is going underneath this window and the issue we had with this previously is the freestanding taps, you have to be able to access it from below. So there's a plasterboard panel that's been left off for us. Um, the only issue being is we've got to drill through the tiles here, which I've been told are extremely hard. So probably should have put some sleeve in it for that, but never mind. Uh, we've got the towel radiator going here on the left. Uh, this is picking up our double vanity unit. 
and then we've got our back to wall toilet going here. So the original saw stack had to stay in that location, so the toilet is gonna sit a bit off in the paneling, but other than that, it should look really nice. Um, yeah, I like this paneling look. This is like the theme throughout this one, so obviously going traditional. And I've just noticed this wallpaper's been put up in this bedroom, which is real fancy. So yeah, let's get all the sanitary wear up here and get started. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is mark out the waste hole. So what we've done is we've centered the unit to the two mirrors that are going up here. Just drawn a pencil line around them and I will get these cut through with a hole saw. Okay, so we've just lifted the countertop onto the vanity unit and we've just found out we've only got one set of taps on site, so unfortunately we're not going to be able to get this part of the job done. So there's no point really putting one set of these taps on because it means we're just going to have to take the work top off to refit them again. So at this stage what we're going to do, we're going to leave it like this and we'll come back to it once they arrive. So what we're going to move on to is actually the bar. So we're going to go find the bar, hopefully that's here, and start getting the whole thrill through these tiles. Okay, so onto the bathroom stall we go, and as you can see, the bath, we just lifted that into the room, and we're gonna be pairing that with these Lee Foy Brooks freestanding taps. So you can see here why we're having to uh, leave the ceiling down underneath, because they've just got copper towels on the bottom, which are soldered at the top of these legs here. This bath is actually fiberglass, so it's quite light, which was pretty handy for us. We used to lift in huge baths, so it wasn't too bad. And what we've done is this bath is going to center of this window. So down there, I've just marked two little red dots. The centers are 180 apart, like standard tap. And I need to get those drilled now. So I'm gonna be using this, which is a 40 mil or 44 mil hole saw. Uh, drill that through. And as you can see, on these shrouds, they're actually really big and we've got four fixings, so we need to drill two holes for the pipes and then eight holes for the fixings, so we'll probably be here till tomorrow. Okay, so we've got the holes drilled now for the 22 mil pipes that are feeding through to the taps. And we're just absolutely fine on this one, but on this side, we're a bit too close to the joist. I'm not too sure I can see that. The joist just overhangs on the left slightly. So we're just gonna chuck the taps in now, just see if they're okay. And if not, we might have to just trim a little bit out of that joist, but it should be okay. Okay, so we've got the tap and the legs in position and I'm just marking with a red sharpie now um, the drill points for the hole. So they've got four each, which is a bit of a pain, but at least we'll get a really good fix and they should be nice and solid. So yeah, we've got eight holes to drill, so we'll get those done now.
Okay, so got the tap all in position now. now I'm not gonna lie that I was a bastard putting in the bolts through the floor. For some reason, they give you like masonry style chrome bolts and there's no like Phillips head or anything on them. And then obviously once you get to the bottom, you can't put a spanner on it because you're gonna scratch it. But the socket set is too wide to get around it, even with a thin socket. So yeah, it was really difficult to be quite patient with it, but it seems to be holding okay. It's actually really, really, um, rigid there, which is great, but if I get any problems, I will just swap the bolts that come out or come with the tap or some chrome or stainless steel screw. So, anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on to the bath waste. So, how we're going to do that is I need to jack the bath up either side, um, <clears throat> work out where the waste is actually going to be, drill a hole back through, and then I'll probably use a flexi onto a standard bath trap and then get that poke through the ceiling, ready to connect up underneath. Okay, so as you can see, we've got it all filled up now and just going to test the drainage and everything underneath, but it's all looking good. We've actually just found the missing taps, which was totally my fault because I accidentally fit them on the wrong sink them back in a different box <laughs> so there you go there there so we can get onto that tomorrow right it's the next day now and we've moved on to the sink so what we've done is we've just dropped it on the floor to make it a bit easier for access because those vanity units are actually quite tight inside Bailey's flashing up some pipe lagging just to protect the edges so what we're going to do is we'll do one each Try to explain to you how we're installing them. And yeah, we can get it all on and tested. Okay, so the first step really is to get your taps in position. So what you need to do is these brass sections underneath, you've got these T pieces. So you want this facing outwards, which makes it a lot easier for the flexi. And you've got on here, you've just got standard plastic back nuts. So what you need to do is hold this in position and then you can get your um, tap lever handles on and what you need to remember is they move in this direction. So let me just spin the camera around. So when you put the splines on, it can be quite awkward to get these um, totally lined up. So obviously what you really want is when the tap's operational, these are pretty much vertical coming down. And then obviously horizontal when the tap's are off. So once these three are in position and you're happy, get those back nuts tightened up and then you can move on to the plumbing connections. Okay, so the next step is to get this T-piece on here. So this T-piece, it connects onto these flexies which go onto these brass outlets for your tap. So you've got hot and cold, obviously either side. And then you, this plastic sleeve here is for the rotted waste. So this nut and olive here needs to be secure to make sure we don't get any water leaks through the T-piece. So small copper section here, joins it all together. Um, by making these brass sections here facing outwards, it makes the flexes a lot neater, especially if you get bent ones provided like we have. So the next step really is to chuck some more flexes onto the actual hot and cold uh, fittings underneath. So by putting that on there, that's where your incoming water is going to come from. You need to make sure that's nice and tight. And because we're never actually going to be able to really get behind it again. So if ever you had a leak, it would be a bit of an issue. Um, so get that tightened up there. And then that'll be good to go. So to secure this sink top, what we've done is we've just added a few blobs of silicone on the corners and also in the center. There's no actual mechanical fixes for it. It does weigh an absolute ton, so it will be fine. What we've done is we've just adjusted the taps to the center of each mirror. Um, obviously we'd centered the unit previously, so just kind of fine tuning it. Okay, so onto the dreaded rotted waist. So with Lee Freud Brooks, obviously you've got the logo on the top, so that needs to be facing forward. So drop that down into the hole and then underneath your waist. If you buy a tap that's got rotted waist, it should always come with this. So it's almost like the accessory kit if you're having a rotted waist. So you've got this nut and ball type spindle that, that needs to screw onto there. 
So I've actually had to cut the back of it down because it was hitting the back of the unit as it was a bit too long. So spin that back into position. That's got a rubber washer on it. So I will still silicone it, but you can get that nice and tight. And what I need to do now is, where's my little nut gone? <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, I've got the two rods pretty much touching each other, and now I need to add this T-shaped uh, nut section or L-shaped section. And what you need to remember is when the spindle's down, um, the plug's actually open. So as you can see here, spindle's all the way down, plug's open, and then if you wanted to close it, pull the spindle up, and that shuts it. So we've obviously got two, and we need to make sure that is pretty similar in height when it's fully closed. So Bailey's done his side and I just need to match it over here. So, Okay, so I've got the L-shaped, T-shaped securing that on those two rods now and what I've had to do is the, on the actual plug itself, you've got an adjustment screw. So sometimes what happens is when you pull the lever up, you'll find that it doesn't fully shut and that's because either the screw's too long or it might be too short. So just remember to adjust that as well. It saves you messing around too much underneath on these rods. So I think that's the problem most people have with these is on rotted waste. You get frustrated because you can't get it to close fully. Um, but always remember you've got that screw on the bottom. So yeah, that's all done now. So I can move on to the waste. Okay, so onto the waste, and we're going to be using these McAlpine waterless uh, space saving traps. So, if you watched our last video, you would have seen us install one on that vanity unit. So, you can see here from this chrome waste, there's actually not much room between the bottom here and the bottom of this unit. So, without these, we wouldn't really be able to install anything. So, they are there are different brands, there are different types, but this is the one that's kind of readily available, I would say. Um, fortunately, because there was a bit of an issue with the waste, we've had managed to move them up, so it should hopefully go straight in, which would be great. So yeah, let's get it on now. Unfortunately, I had to use 245 just to get it in the right position. It was like an awkward place where it was either slightly too low or slightly too high. So yeah, I've tried, well, I have used 245 just to swing it down, so you can't really see. Um, like I say, we get some shrouds around the waste pipe as well. Um, it's always a good idea when you're testing just to chuck some blue tissue underneath and leave it there so you can check later on in the day see if you've got any drips. So last thing to do really is just test it, run the water through, and just before I do that, I'm just gonna silicone this rubber.